Are you conscious? Do you possess consciousness? Let's imagine for a moment that this is a device that can measure if people or beings have consciousness. Let's imagine that this device here, when I press the button, that it would measure if you are conscious or not. Do I possess consciousness? Did the dinosaurs possess consciousness? Who is really conscious when it comes to it? Welcome to this book review about Philosophers on Consciousness. It's a new series in the philosophy books called Talking About Philosophy. And this uh, book also has a subtitle uh, Talking About the Mind. It is a series uh, edited by uh, Jack Symes. And uh, Jack Symes has uh, sent me this book for, uh, yeah, for, for doing one of my uh, video reviews. And I'm I really, really uh, recommend this book. It's highly recommendable. I, I, I very much enjoyed uh, reading this book, and uh, I, I really felt that I, that I, I kind of learned something about the subject. I'm not sure. I'm. I still know what to uh, conclude for myself. What I, what I uh, uh, think about uh, uh, consciousness and. And when philosophers uh, think about the mind, what to really think? But I, I felt that I, that I learned something. So it's it's a book for everyone, of course, who are interested in the, this uh, subject. So it also has these uh, smart boxes where you can. Uh, uh, when it when the f the different philosophers comes into uh, uh, complex uh, subjects, uh, complex uh, concepts, uh, you get an expl explanatory uh, box here about the concepts, so you can uh, uh, read those or not. It, it depends on where you are in your level of philosophy. Perhaps you're a student and a philosopher who knows these concepts. You can maybe skip them. Uh, maybe you're really new to uh, philosophy, uh, academic philosophy, then, then, you, then these boxes help. And there's also, at each chapter, I think this is really, really good. And it, uh, it's, it's, very, uh, it, it's a very good idea to do it like this. Uh, questions to consider. Does, uh, e each chapter uh, ends with, uh, with uh, uh, five questions for yourself. So uh, when uh, people say philosophy it's about asking questions, then uh, the reader here can ask questions for, for him, him or herself about uh, the chapter he, he, he or she just read. And I think this is uh, very good. I have never seen that uh, really before in any book. So, so this uh, was very great to, to, to go and think about these questions for yourself. After you read a chapter, you put the book down and you can go around thinking about these questions. And and you can go back and also, what were the questions? Uh, you can go back and, and re read them again and think about it again. And the book, is, it's not that particularly long. It's, uh, it's 150 pages uh, and then you get all the, the end notes. But so it's a uh, it's it's not that long, but it's very very dense and uh, complex and and highly educational. You remember in the beginning of the video I had this, which actually is a hair dryer. It's not a measuring tool to measuring if I'm conscious or not. It's uh, actually the famous uh, Australian philosopher, isn't he from Australia? Uh, Australian philosopher Damon Chalmers. So in the 90s he's, uh, he walked around uh, at, a, at a, 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 a philosophical convention uh, uh, pointing this uh, uh, hair driver and, and asking uh, all the, uh, the, uh, the people who, who were there 
are you conscious trying to measure it uh, conscious to make a point that about this uh, consciousness because uh, he's the one who invented this uh, term which is a big uh, thing in this book that uh, kind of all philosophers are asked in this book called uh, what David Chalmers called the hard problem. I have a feeling that I'm conscious, that I'm conscious about uh, <laughs> I, I draw, draw a, a stick man here who uh, thinks about a chair, he's uh, conscious about him uh, seeing a chair in front of him, he feels like he's conscious and he's conscious about this chair, but how do we know he's conscious? What is consciousness really? And why can science explain why we are conscious about, uh, let's say, a chair and about ourselves? And the, that's the reason why David Chalmers walked around with this hairdryer pointing, imagine this was a, a tool for measuring consciousness. We don't have that. We cannot point at ourselves, am I conscious, or uh, with uh, animals, uh, dogs, uh, my, mice, or uh, the dinosaurs that are, that are held up. That they, we, we can't me measure a fossil device uh, about a dinosaur and point at the fossil and did it possess consciousness. So that's the interesting thing about the whole philosophy of mind, which is the philosophy of uh, consciousness. I think, therefore, uh, I am. So, I'm conscious, right? So, where does this uh, consciousness come from? Or are we even conscious at all. Maybe we're just zombies walking around uh, and actually are not conscious. We are totally on uh, some sort of uh, automatic pilot who, and we uh, uh, generally uh, just uh, think that we are conscious but that's, that's not really a conscious subject somewhere uh, in here. And that's also when it comes down to it, uh, with this whole business of uh, philosophy of conscious, that that what is this consciousness? Is it is it is it, uh, is it a, a physical thing, the mind body problem, which it's a kind of an interesting thing because the whole thing about what consciousness is is it something in the body? Is it a uh, uh, physical this consciousness is it something that happens in the brain is it brain process or what is it or is it kind of a independent uh, is it uh, uh, is it kind of a uh, separated from the body this mind uh, if we have a mind and this mind is supposed to be conscious is it separated from the body? Is it something different? So it becomes a philosophical problem about what this uh, consciousness is. And, and what, something that also comes up in this book is about different uh, levels of consciousness. If, if you're one of these philosophers who thinks we have consciousness, then are there kind of levels to consciousness? Uh, are there an everyday consciousness? Are there kind of a more in-depth consciousness? Uh, I don't know how to uh, really explain it, but uh, think of it, it, it this way: you can uh, you you can be aware, and you could be aware of your own awareness. Whoa. Let's take a mouse so awareness. Maybe it's caught in a trap, a mouse trap, and it's still alive. Sometimes uh, these mice uh, survive uh, a, a mouse uh, contraption device. It's aware of its pain, but are 
but is it aware of its own awareness like uh, human beings are and do we everybody do we do that all the time people uh, go around now I'm aware that I'm conscious and I'm aware about being conscious uh, I'm, I'm aware that I'm thinking about having this pain now and I can look at it at at a deeper level of awareness that I having this pain uh, which the mouse probably cannot that that's kind of a different way of thinking about this uh, uh, consciousness and that there might be levels of it for some philosophers but that also the whole thing that are there really consciousness or not or is it some sort of uh, an illusion but but first let's go back to this uh, uh, mind body problem that 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 is it entirely uh, physical is uh, is it uh, is it ju just f in the body is it a, a physical thing if it's a physical thing it's just in the body you can be a physicalist uh, a physicalist and uh, then some philosophers in the, in the book uh, thinks that that it's uh, more a job for for the scientist to to uh, to uh, figure out to to figure out uh, what is this uh, consciousness and maybe come up with a, a measuring device that can measure are we conscious or, or not so so there but are disagreements uh, about uh, if is it only the sciences or should the scientist get help from a philosopher okay what I will come into here uh, is my uh, distillation, my totally boiled down this uh, book of what I see are three uh, different viewpoints you can have towards the whole business of uh, consciousness. And, uh, and you can be a, a physicalist and being into physicalism, you can be an illusionist being into illusionism, and you can be third a pan psychist being into this pan uh, physical pan uh, psychism sorry and uh, physicalist uh, is what I've been talking about before that that uh, you think consciousness is in the brain it has uh, something to do with your physical body that's what it originates uh, this from this uh, consciousness that that uh, uh, consciousness must come from a matter of some sort. It must come from a physical thing, physical processes, and so forth. Or you can be this uh, being an illusionist, being into illusionism, and this is the most, actually one of the most uh, difficult uh, positions to understand. That's what I think, and I'm not sure I really understand it uh, thoroughly uh, you can read the book and and maybe you can understand it better than I but but if you're an illusionist you believe uh, and you understand co consciousness as an illusion it is uh, something that is seeming we seem to have a consciousness but we do not really have consciousness it's, uh, it's more a, a mere uh, seeming appearance of having a a uh, <laughs> a consciousness. <clears throat> so this is a uh, very counterintuitive because uh, a lot of people are, are going around uh, thinking, you know, well, I seem conscious, I feel conscious, but it's only a seeming, and that's a problem here for the illusionist that that if you practice. Practice being a consciousness says, says you're you're eating a, an apple or a banana. Uh, try being conscious about eating this apple or, or a banana, and 
And then other, uh, uh, try being conscious when you drink coffee or watching a movie. Ah, I'm conscious that I'm aware of watching a movie and I'm aware of me being aware of watching a movie. Try and do that. You generate this consciousness, which is not really there. And that's the whole thing for this illusion is that, that the, the so-called consciousness we have is something that is generated. Generated, it's something we construct. It's not really there, it's a seeming. There's something else going on. So it's a difficult uh, uh, position to understand, but it's in the book, so we can go deep into that. I'm having very trouble with this illusionist because I generally think that René Descartes was a, sorry, a fucking genius. He really understood that the only thing we really could be sure of is our own awareness, our own consciousness. I think, therefore I am. I'm really into this, and as a philosopher, I generally think the strongest card a philosopher has is him being conscious. It all boils down for the philosopher that he's conscious, that we are aware and we can think stuff and we can think about thinking. So for me that's, uh, this is not a position for me, but that's my position. Of course you can have different views about it and being a illusionist. I'm not an illusionist. Am I a physicalist? I generally think that, that yes, uh, consciousness seems to come inside my brain and I have a sensation and an awareness of something, somebody being inside me uh, thinking. But, but I, I also question this, especially after reading this book. I, get, I have been shaken in some of my views, so this is interesting for me as a philosopher and probably also for you, so you should read the book. Panpsychism, being into this, uh, being a panpsychist, that's a very interesting position. It means it's a pan, panpsychist, so it's the word, I don't know if you can see it here, pan, and that's uh, Greek, and pan me means uh, everything, so everything, psychism, so everything has consciousness, everything has consciousness, even an electron on an atomic level, an electron has consciousness, a piece of grass out in my garden, has consciousness. That's the idea in panpsychism. So we, it bypasses the whole problem that uh, consciousness comes from matter. It has to come from matter. Well, everything has consciousness. So all matter has consciousness. It's an interesting position. Uh, can we prove it? Probably not. It's not something we generally think that, uh, that everything has a consciousness, so, but am I a pan-psychist? Well, I'm, I'm also very open to this position because uh, I generally have the experience that uh, at least animals, cats and dogs and so forth, has consciousness at, at some level. And I always, uh, even before I read this book, was interested in the idea that a, an electron has consciousness because we have within physics a double split experiment we have the observer effect and so forth where it seems like a, a, a an electron chooses to be either a particle behaves like a particle or it uh, behaves like like having a wave function I'm not going to go deep into this you can read up about this uh, double split experiment and the observer effect but for some uh, 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 for some, this uh, electron seems like it, it, it chooses to be one thing or another, and if it chooses something, then it has consciousness. Uh, but but it, it's it's not, nothing here is proven. Of course, it's also speculation and and theorizing. So it's a very interesting position, this uh, pan psychist. So I'm pretty open to that. And I'm also, of course, in some way or another, a, a, a physicalist. It's, it's, it's kind of like I'm probably a mixture between uh, th these two points. Maybe you're different. I don't know. 
uh, how you your views. I would like to hear your uh, comments on this in the comment section. What do you think? Do you fall between uh, one of these trees, or do you have a totally uh, another viewpoint on this uh, or something? Let me know in the comments. So I uh, hope you like this uh, video, and I really, really look forward to the next part of this series talking about philosophy that Jack Symes uh, is editing. And hopefully I will do another uh, book review, video book review on, on, on the next uh, uh, installment on that uh, series talking about philosophy. So I'll see you in the next video. Bye.